Hey guys, Joe with BitRaged. So a lot of you guys have been talking about Mt. Gox and the whole story here in the comments, and so I wanted to address it. You know, it's something that we thought we left behind us, the whole Mt. Gox thing. We left that in 2014, we were done with it, and now it's coming back to bite us and coming back to haunt us. And I don't think it's a coincidence that this story was released at this time, this week. It's not a coincidence at all. This guy here purposely released this and revealed this to the press to further what he's trying to do. So I want to show you a graph here and show you the exact times when a ton of Bitcoin was released into the market. So this is the graph we're talking about. So we're talking about 40,000 Bitcoin released into the market. So at all time highs here, 2,000 Bitcoin gets released. 6,000 here at this high, 8,000 at this high, 6,000 at this point here, and then finally on February 5th, 18,000. So 40,000 came into the market between 20,000 and this point here, right around 8,000. Now, whether or not he planned to sell all of this doesn't really matter. What matters is with that much Bitcoin, you can essentially manipulate the market, get the ball rolling any way you want. So if you start a panic, sellers are gonna pick that up. It doesn't take much to get the ball rolling in this market because it's very emotional. So if you start the ball rolling, sellers pick that up and it continues. So it's sold off and I would say this guy here was one of the ones to buy here. So a couple of you guys left a link to this in the comments and so I want to thank you for that. And if you want to check it, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check the source and see that this is actually what is going on. So how does that impact the market and what does that really mean for us? Well, what it means is Bitcoin has seen some manipulation. And if you just look at a daily chart here, this entire run up and really back in here and here, all the way up from 1900 and even before that, this was largely manipulation. This entire run was largely manipulation. Part of it was Tether, and we're going to talk about that in a video early next week. So part of this was Tether and that whole scam pumping money into the market to pump the price up. So Tether played a huge part in this. This whole crash here was simply because we ran up to here with no support, with no basis. And when you do that, you have to come crashing down, similar to what happened in 2014. In 2014, we had a lot more negative things happen, so we had Mt. Gox completely blow up. The biggest exchange in the world blowing up, that's huge. But on the other side, on the other side of the coin, we have a lot of negative things happening in the market right now. And Mt. Gox or not, what happened in 2014 would have happened to one scale or another that correction would have happened whether or not Mt. Gox blew up or not. So should we be worried about this? It's not something we can control, but it is something to be aware of. You want to know what is going on in the market. It influences whether or not we're going to hold 8,500. If we have the fear, and simply the fear itself of the whole Mt. Gox story and the Bitcoin that is being released in the market potentially, that whole story there impacts the market by a lot. So you're gonna have a hard time climbing back up because at this point there's that fear that if we start a bullish run, we're gonna get pushed back down and we're going to not be able to hold it. So it is worth noting that we haven't had a green candle, a bullish candle you could say, in several days. So we're working on about four days at least uh, probably five if you count this. Five days without any signal of buyers trying to stop this. And the last time we saw that long of a stretch without a green candle, without a move back up on the daily, was back here when we fell off from 20,000 and fell all the way down really to 10,000 but caught support in the 13,000 range. That's the last time we saw this kind of panic, and that's worth noting. So here we are, we have attempted to make a run. It was pushed back, and 
I say attempted because we were pretty weak in that run. We ran up, fell back off, ran up a little bit farther in this candle here, and really got defeated, and now we see the sell-off from that. So coming back down, we're looking to try to hold 8,500, and I really don't see that happening just because there's so much pressure on the market to sell. It's insane how much pressure there is. And we have volume levels on, on GDAX up about 40,000. So we're talking 40,000 from levels around 8,000 just a week ago. So that's just insane. We have a ton of pressure to sell. And I really don't see us holding support in this range, even though it is really solid support and in any other market we should hold here no problem but i don't see us having the support to do that and i think breaking 8500 is going to be a signal to the market that we're still in this correction to anybody who still is bullish that we're in this correction we've never really gone out of it so we do look to this area in here to try and stop this run but just looking at where we've come and how far off we've fallen so far, it's gonna become harder and harder to stop this. So again, we talked about the support levels in the last video and that is still relevant. So you can still work on all of these levels here. So every time we had a run that built support, every time we ran up, we built support, even here. So this was good because we built support in this entire range. So if you want to say right around 8,000, 78 to 8,000, we built a lot of support in that range. And so that would be where we would look to bounce off and hold. But as we fall down further, we may not be able to hold some of those more minor support levels. So there is a question out there, where is the absolute bottom? And frankly, at this point, we just don't know where that absolute bottom is going to be. We have to actually find it and establish that support in the market to get to that bottom. The question is, are we going back to the 6,000 level that we saw back here on the 6? That is not out of the cards. It's not out of the cards to see that yet, uh, simply because there is a lot of pressure in the market right now. There's a lot of negative things, and if we get much more negative news or or negative things happening in the market, we could see this go even more crazy. So the SEC has said that all exchanges must register with them. So that has been a huge fear point for a lot of people. You know, people are seeing that as regulations starting to control how Bitcoin operates and cryptocurrency operates uh, on the exchanges. So that is some big fear there. And there's a lot of unknowns in the market. Tether being one of those big unknowns and people are just scared that that is going to blow up in their face and they're going to get stuck in this market. There is a lot of fear at this point. That plays in a lot to where we're going in price. But as we stand right now, we're looking at 8,500 and we're still working on that support. Until we break that, we're still working on that support. So we'll have to see how that goes here over the weekend and we probably will break that today if it continues the way it's been continuing the last couple days. So that's going to do it for the video. I just want to give you some of my thoughts for today and then show you the Mt. Gox thing and the whole graph and, and show you where that is coming into play. If you have a question, you have a comment, leave that in the comments. If you have a suggestion for a video, leave that in the comments. If you're not subscribed, definitely go ahead and do that. we got a whole video planned on Tether that we talked about here early next week. So definitely want to be subscribed so you don't miss out on that. So that's going to do it for the video. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.